Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Faisal Khan and in this video, we're going to focus on Amazon Connect routing. How does Amazon Connect route calls to your agent? Now, it is one thing to configure queue and create a routing profile, assign it to agent and make, make a call to the work. But it is another thing to understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, things becomes much easier to either uh, configure a, a uh, proper solutions for customers as well as be able to troubleshoot when you need to now the when it comes to routing in amazon connect the routing is provided by two different components of amazon connect one would be the queue and one would be the routing profile but first you need to understand how does the routing works a contact which is usually a call coming from customers or your internal employees are basically routed routed through your contact center based on three different factors the routing profile that are assigned to an agent the hours of operation because some calls may not be allowed in a certain time of the day for a particular given queue and of course the routing logic that you define within your contact flow for example let's say if you if, if a call were to arrive from a customer first thing you'll use is that you're going to use a routing profile to route a specific type of contact to a to agent with a specific set of skills. Now, you also have to keep in mind that certain calls might be a voice contact, so certain calls could be a chat, certain calls could be an email. Now, if there is no agent that are available, with, if there's no agent with the required skills are currently available, then you need to take certain actions and usually in a contact center what we do is that we queue the call in a, a temporary locations until an agent becomes available or certain action has been taken so how does the amazon connect logic works well first of all when a call arrive or contact arrive in a queue are automatically prioritized and forwarded to the next available agent that is of course the agent who has been either sitting idle for longest period of time. A call or contact will be then placed on hold if there is no available agent uh, is available to receive your call. Now, sometimes the agent might be busy, maybe they haven't uh, logged in yet, or maybe they have logged in, but they're not available, and many reasons why there could, there could be no agent available. Now, the order in which this call are, are, are arrived will be serviced uh, will be then determined by the time in the queue and it's first come first service in the generally now of course if there are more than one call agents are currently let's say ready for a contact so let's say suddenly five agent becomes available and ready ready for a contact then what's going to happen is by default an inbound contact meaning the call that came in from outside which is considered to be an inbound will be routed to that agent who has been in available status for the longest period of time so let's say uh, i got two agents myself and my colleague we just become available but i became available for 10 seconds my colleague became available for five seconds so far for the when the, whatever the call is waiting in the queue will come to me because i have been available the longest period of time so this is basically the behavior of most contact center. Now, of course, this behavior can be tweaked to meet certain requirements. Handling either inbound and outbound call. Now, always keep in mind that when an agent, let's like say myself, I'm an agent, and I am designated for both inbound and outbound call, inbound call will always have higher priority. Now, handling, uh, handling either an inbound and outbound contact center causes the agent to drop to the bottom of a list for an inbound contact. So for example, as soon as I answer a call, now I become part of the bottom of the list where the other guys who are waiting now become above me. Because remember the longest available, uh, longest time an agent was available will receive the call first. Now you can set up a routing profile to ignore the outbound contact in, in, the, in this calculation by choosing outbound calls should not impact routing order. So let's go take a look at how we uh, can enable that. So when you look at your routing profile, because remember the routing profile will control, control the under users, you see the routing profile. There is a basic routing profile. 
So this is where the call will determine how the call gets routed. So at the very bottom, you'll see call set the routing order. So if you do not want the outbound uh, calls being affected in, the, in terms of calculating how agent handles the call, then you want to say uncheck this, uh, check this option. By checking this option, what's going to happen is when an agent make an outbound call, they maintain their place in the line for receiving inbound call. Remember what I meant by that. I, if I'm an agent and I am designated for both inbound and outbound, what's going to happen is if I'm making an outbound call, because as soon as I handle any call, whether it is an inbound or outbound, doesn't matter, I, go, I will fall down to the bottom of the list. That means that even though I haven't received an inbound call, let's say for 10 minutes, and I'm, I'm supposed to, uh, what is the rule says? The rule says that whoever has been available for longest period of time. So let's say I have uh, Kelly right beside me and both of us, I've been waiting in available status for five minutes. Kelly has been waiting for two minutes. So obviously any call, inbound call that comes in, I call supposed to go to me first because I've been waiting for longest period of time. But the moment I handle an outbound call, I will, even though I haven't received an inbound call, as soon as I handle an outbound call, what's going to happen is I will fall behind uh, Kelly when it comes to handling the inbound call because I handled an outbound call. There, so as soon as you handle something, it will, you, you go back up the line. To avoid me going from back up the line, what I will do, you can check uncheck this option. So say that, look, it doesn't matter what Faisal does with outbound call. His position of receiving an in inbound contact, as long as he has been sitting there for 10 minutes, the longest period of time for available status, call should go to him. So that's how you control how you want to handle calls going to an agent. Now, considering this option, if your organization wants agent to take an outbound call and still get a, their fair share of inbound contacts. Now, you always keep in mind that the routing profile may assign a priority to one queue over another queue however the priority within the queue is always set by the order the contact was added to the queue now to understand how a routing works when you have a multiple channel now multiple channel means voice chat and whatnot so when you set up a routing profile to handle multiple channel you must specify whether the agent can handle contact while they are already in another channel for example Let's say that I am already on a voice call, but there's a web chat come in. Should I handle the web chat while I'm talking to someone on the voice channel? Or if I am chatting with someone, should I receive the voice call or not? So when, you, when you're when you using the cross-channel concurrency, the Amazon Connect will check, uh, check which contact to offer the agent as follow. It will check to see what the contact and channel agent are currently handling. And based on the channels that they're currently handling and the cross-channel configuration in the agent routing profile, that will determine whether the agent can be routed to the next contact. Now, the, to, to see how an agent uh, cross-channel works, let's assume that the agent has been assigned with the following routing profile that has a channel that sets you know number of uh, one voice call, two chat calls, right? So let's go take a look at how an agent profile works. So when you, if you look at your basic routing, you have number of channels, you said number of voice call one. Now, obviously you don't want, you, you, you cannot change that value because a person cannot talk to two persons at a time, right? So you can only handle one voice call, but you can handle two chat. So now the question is when you are, if, if you want to allow, if you want to allow the agent to handle other contact, then you have to specify the cross channel frequency, right? So if they are on a voice call, you can say no other channels while the agent is on a voice call. Or you can say uh, all uh, allow other channel co concurrently, okay? You can also specify that if they, if they are on the chat, then no other channel will be available, okay? So you can specify this cross channel. Now, usually when you're on the voice, you do not want uh, people to do other tasks because they, their their focus may be you know shifted. But if they're chatting with someone, it is possible that they can receive a voice call. So you you know whether you want to enable that or not, it is totally up to your organization's requirement. So if I were to keep everything default, let's say if I um, I change the last part, 
that if you take a task, uh, allow other channel to work. But in the case of voice and chat, no other uh, channel uh, should be allowed. And the reason sometimes is that because chat is basically something that you work on, um, like closing a ticket, updating a database. It You can do multiple of them because you're not really dealing interactively with someone uh, live, right? So this makes it easier. So when you take a chat task, let's say you have two of them, and you can say allow other channel concurrently. So in a case like that, how will the agent experience, uh, uh, what will be the routing behavior for the particular agent? Now let's assume that agent is fully idle, right? And the next agent, uh, the next, the agent accepts a chat and begins working on it. Meanwhile, a task coming in. So if I am sitting idle and I'm chatting with someone, suddenly a task just came in, right? And if you look at the chat, it says, look, uh, no other channel is allowed. Now, even though there is a task uh, in the queue for me to do, it will not be offered to me because I am not allowed to answer any other channel because I am handling a chat section, uh, ch chat session. Now, if there is a chat in the queue, for example, I am an idle, I I'm sitting idle right now, and a chat in the queue, an agent maximum chat concurrency is two. So they are routed another chat for total of two. So while I'm chatting with someone, a second chat will come in, even though it says no other channel while the agent is on chat, but I am allowed to handle two chat at a time. But I cannot still take that task because it says while I'm chatting, no other channel will be available. Now, if there is no other chat in the queue, an agent will, agent, let's say I finish both of this chat with my user, with my client and my um, the call after our after call work timeout has been expired, and the the task is still waiting in the queue. At this moment, the task will come to me because I'm an idle. I'm an, I'm idle and I'm not handling chat. I'm not handling voice. Therefore, I can now start working on that particular chat. Now, while I'm working on that chat, uh, sorry, task. Uh, I'm work, I can work on the task. So while I'm working on the task. Let's say someone just want to chat with me. The task is says that why that allow all other channel concurrently. That means that while I am finishing up a database update, let's say the task was something to do with the database update and it's gonna take me five minutes, and I'm in mean two minutes into my work, suddenly there's a chat coming in, right? Or a voice call came in. In that scenario, I will be able to answer the voice call or the chat while I am working on the task. And that is because it says, while I'm on the chat, as you can see, task, uh, allow other channel concurrently. So this is the behavior of how user works. So keep in mind that in the case where, if, if you look at this scenario, if I am chatting with a customer, no other task will be offered to me, no voice call will be offered to me, but second chat will be offered to me because I have two concurrent chat capability. But if I'm not doing anything, I finish my, I close my chat, I'm sitting idle, a task comes in, I'm working on the task, suddenly a voice call comes in, I can answer that voice call because it says that allow other uh, channel concurrently. So that's the behavior you need to understand when you're setting up this task. Because if you don't do that, then the, your efficiency, if, how using your agent efficiently will become a, a problem in your environment. Now, another scenario, let's, uh, let's say that um, I am working on the chat, right? Sorry, task. I'm updating the database. And while I'm updating the database, there is uh, a chat comes in and I'm chatting with another user. The moment I take, see, you got to understand this. Step one, I'm working on a chat, uh, task. Keep saying chat. I'm working on a task and is updating a database. Now, while I'm doing that, a chat comes in and I'm chatting with that agent. So because the task allows, allow other channels, so I, I'm allowed to go into the chat. The moment I go into the chat, let's say there is, I'm chatting with the user and a voice call comes in. Now what's gonna happen is because the chat rule says, if you take a chat, no other channels while the agent is on a chat. That means I can come from a task to the chat, web chat, but I cannot take any other task or a voice call simply because as soon as I take a chat session with a user, 
that rule where it says no other channel while agent on the chat becomes an F in effect. Therefore, I will not be uh, the voice call will not be routed to me, but I can continue to work with both chat as well as the task at the same time. Now, if I complete the chat and it still works on the task, in that scenario, voice call will be allowed because there is a says that I allow other channel concurrently. But the moment I answer the voice call, I can no longer take a chat because the voice call says no other channel while agent uh, uh, you know working working on the voice contact. So these are very important to understand because if you don't uh, configure them properly, you may end up miss uh, in not utilizing your agent more efficiently. All right, so hope you understand how this cross channel concurrency works and how you can how the routing works within your uh, uh, contact center, uh, Amazon contact center in terms of queue and routing profile. We will learn more details and advanced features of the queuing, how to configure them and how to organize them within your profile. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.